Hello everybody, welcome to MNB World Talk Show. Today we have invited a very talented chef who is also the founder of five famous restaurants in Nordlambatar. Also, he is a father of five children. Please welcome the director of Silk Road Magic LLC, Mr. Inge Yatumsurum. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation coming to our studio. Thank you for inviting me. I'm excited to take part in your show. Sure, thank you very much. Um, first of all, I'm really interested in your educational background. Like, I know that now you are working as a chef, right? Yeah. And you are very successful in it. But you uh, studied as an engineer, right? In yeah. the USSR former in Ukraine, right? Yes. Uh, tell us about your major. Why did you become engineer first? Oh, okay. Thank you for remembering that I'm an engineer. Okay, so um, this actually was not my decision, it was the decision of my dad. Mm -hmm. So in, in the time back, as the 1980s, which I'm from, mm -hmm. uh, where I'm from, um, no, we, as, as a kid we had some kind of dream, mm -hmm. who, who we should become, like mm -hmm. cosmonaut, policeman, yes. mm -hmm. driver, taxi driver, mm -hmm. whatever, okay. There's kind of beautiful, naive dreams, but when a come to serious thing, mostly the parents decided. My dad was engineer, ah. and he said, okay, I'm engineer, you should become ah, an engineer. Then he sent me to Russia, mm. which I'm thankful. Mm -hmm. I learned so many things there, except drinking only, except not only drinking <laughs> vodka, I, had, I drink also <laughs> some good stuff though. See. So now uh, let's then introduce you to our audience a little bit more in mm -hmm. photos and resume, mm -hmm. let's take a look. Uh, now, let's talk about, again, your uh, engineer being time, right? So, uh, how long did you work as an engineer? Um, professionally, um, in my opinion, I was quite a good engineer because I really studied hard, worked mm -hmm. really hard. And uh, even my diploma work was, uh, brought to, I, I got the highest notes mm -hmm. in a university mm -hmm. uh, with the hope that I could serve to myself and to my country. So mm. I was a real patriot by mm. that time. I hope it's still. And um, when I came back, okay, the, uh, it was very quite secure by that time, you know. When I came back, the job was waiting for me, mm. okay. The, this job, was, I was de uh, dedicated to one um, uh, engineer mm -hmm. job, and then it, it was, it, in, uh, in, um, it calls the, uh, let me say, we called it in English. Mm -hmm. It was authority mm -hmm. for design and invention. Mm -hmm. Okay, so th this uh, this uh, this bureau worked for uh, in order to for uh, for for many 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 industries many mm -hmm. industries to developing for them new uh, new designs, mm -hmm. new new inventions, mm -hmm. uh, registering invention, etc. Yes. etc. Later on, okay, I worked there for for. I think I think six months or seven months. Mm -hmm. Then I, later I got the luck to got involved in the project uh, initiated by UNDP, mm. which uh, uh, they sent me to Western Europe. Oh wow! Okay, I think it's more than six months as I remember. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. then I worked in uh, Germany mm -hmm. and Finland mm -hmm. and uh, Poland as well. Mm. So it was 1990. Mm -hmm. So no one by that time really went to West mm -hmm. to get some involvement in, in, a, in a job, etc., etc. So I was quite lucky. This, which really opened my eyes mm -hmm. to to the, to the world, world, to the <laughs> Western world. Yeah, and when I came back, all my friends were really surprised uh -huh. that I did it. You yeah. know, because by that time, no it one did quite it. Rare. It was quite rare. It was quite rare. This was yeah. 1990, I think, mm -hmm. just beginning of the Night. And so, do you speak now those languages? Oh yes, I speak German. I speak a little bit Polish. Wow. Yeah, I could understand. I could conversate maybe a little bit oh, in I Polish. See. Yeah. 
and maybe Ukrainian. But not not Finnish. Ukrainian, Ukrainian. yeah. Ukrainian, yeah, right? I, yeah, Ukrainian I, could, I could understand. Oh, I, I could see. sometimes even reply in Ukrainian when someone asked wow. me in Ukrainian. But uh, really did, uh, involved, get involved in the long conversation like we do. Adopt. Maybe I will switch in Russian oh, I see. rather than Ukraine. Oh, that's awesome. So for six months, right? It's quite young. Yeah. Um, let's now talk about your current work. So now you are chef, right? How that transition happened exactly? So, like, it's like a very big difference like being an engineer and becoming a chef. Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell us oh, about that? now, uh, okay. You call me chef. Thank you. Uh, sure. um, personally, I'm not uh, thinking I'm a chef. Oh, really? Okay, the chef is given to me by people, oh, but I not. I, I didn't earn or get any award. I was not rewarded so as a chef. You don't represent yourself as a chef. Okay, even if you. Okay, I'm happy with that uh, with that designation <laughs> as a chef because it's really honorable. Mm -hmm. But I would say I'm a retired chef. Wow. I'm not. I'm not really involved more anymore in the cooking, mm. in the line cooking. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I cook mm -hmm. for my family, for from friends, mm -hmm. or for a special occasion, mm. from special on the special uh, requests. But I'm really not involved uh, in, uh, in a daily basis mm -hmm. in the chef activities. So I'm retired. Mm -hmm. So that is maybe as a sportsman, I'm out of form. That's if you ask me to cook this, maybe I can cook. But if you ask me to cook one week for you, then maybe it will be questionable. Uh -huh. So I'm not a chef anymore, I'm a retired chef. But um, I'm really involved in the cooking when I was, um, you asked me why you become a chef, why you switch. Yeah, and it, how that happened. How that happened. Oh, yes. It was not my decision, though, okay? So I had to do it mm -hmm. because when I came back from Western Europe, mm -hmm. after the study, after the practicing, after the walking, and, um, uh, the whole system collapsed, mm, yeah. you know, the whole system collapsed right. and uh, you really could not uh, perform you as engineer. Mm. So it's very sad for me. And uh, then I had, I, I went back to Germany from Europe mm -hmm. and come back in 1997. Mm -hmm. Then it was even nothing to do with, so I, all, all the skill of engineer was in the back mm -hmm. and behind. So mm -hmm. I had to do something. By that time, sorry for if I go long. It's, it's a long story. It's yeah, not. Just, it's not happening within yeah, one that's day. That's why. That's why, we're I, in that's why it's a long story. And, and I had my brother-in-law who lived in Germany, but he lived in with the Italian family. Oh wow! So he even managed their restaurant. He started mm -hmm. from Pizzaola until he's, he became the manager of the family restaurant. Mm -hmm. He came back from uh, Germany and said, "Hey, Eddie, ha, let's do it. Let's do pizzas. <laughs> Whoa, how?" No, no one in Mongolia will like a pizza. By that time, the no, pizza, there yeah. was absence. Yes. Pizza is, was kind of kind of strange word, maybe really the word, stranger yeah. word from other planets. Yeah. Okay, we started. Mm -hmm. Suddenly we start become successful. We, mm -hmm. Within one, even one year, we opened three restaurants, mm -hmm. pizza restaurants. So I was owner of, we were, we were running the first pizza chain restaurant, maybe in Central Asia, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> in this region, yeah. okay? We were become successful, That's what, but you said, why I become a chef? Mm -hmm. But this guy who was a uh, partner with me and my brother-in-law fell in love. Oh, wow. And he went <laughs> to America. No. He left me in the mean, <laughs> ugly here. world of the business, okay? So uh, you let then, him go. Let him go, of oh. course. It's, he, he fell in love, you know. <laughs> That's why I had to <laughs> learn myself to uh, do all these skills. Every, manage all Yeah, everything. okay, by that time uh -huh. I really know how to cook, uh, how to cook Italian, etc., exactly. etc. Even back in Germany, I did some job, waiter job, mm -hmm. some kitchen helping and, uh, when I was in Europe. Then I started, okay, let's do. Mm -hmm. Because you have three restaurants, right. you know, you know how to cook, you know, train the chefs, you train, train the cooks, you know, know the whole business from A to Z. Mm -hmm. That's why I become directly involved in the cooking. Mm -hmm. By that time, we didn't have enough stuff, you know, the, the, the enough cooks mm -hmm. who could cook Italian. So mm -hmm. you have to do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. Now you uh, successful here in Otlambatar, you have five restaurants, right? Oh. Tell us about those restaurants, like how you established them and mm 
maybe the peculiarities of each of them, maybe mm -hmm. a few words. Okay, you said number five, but currently we, we don't have five. Oh, wow. Okay, from 1987, no, 1997 till current days, so it's like how many years? 23 years? Mm -hmm. Oh, within the 23 years, I opened more than 12 restaurants. Mm -hmm. Okay, some of them closed, some of them sold, some of them uh, taken over, some of them were failure in mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but before the coronavirus, I had six. Mm. Now I have one, two, three, three. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm happy with that. Yeah, <laughs> of course. So um, uh, one is, um, uh, you asked me about stories. Okay, the main flagship of my business is a Silk Road restaurant. Mm -hmm. It was started from 2002. So it's 18 years in the business. Mm -hmm. and It is still one of the favorite places in, uh, in Ulaanbaatar, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, I had to close two other restaurants because of the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. Not the virus affected my business, but my staff. I had Cuban staff, I had Peruvian staff, I had Mexican uh, mm -hmm. from abroad. Yeah. I just accident because, you know, business slowed down mm -hmm. just before, before, we, before the border were closed. Mm -hmm. And I sent them back, okay, for, relax, for holiday, uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, hoping they will come back. But, but the they, border closed, they cannot go in. So come in. Right. So it's you eight, year, for yeah, now. Yeah. eight years mm -hmm. without them. It's uh, it's it's not that easy. So, mm -hmm. but I'm happy. I'm okay with that. Okay. So, so so if you say is I'm successful, yes, I think I'm successful. I'm successful myself. This is what's important. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay. Now then, let's see how you work. Let's go to your restaurant and see. Okay. Let's take a look. We've been working in a catering and hospitality business since 2001. Even, even I started the business um, since uh, 1997, but uh, we started more broadly operating the catering services from 2001. Uh, now currently we're operating uh, four restaurants, so one in the Silk Road, called named Silk Road, since 2001. Uh, there is, um, uh, Broster Chicken Express, where we're serving the high quality fried chicken products. And uh, currently, we, we are now here at, at uh, our newly operated place called Hollandok, named Hollandok, which means like meal time. Here we can serve events uh, for 50 to 120, 140 people at once. This place is equipped with high quality audio and light equipment has a stage and here we have the best our chefs uh, working uh, for you guys. Now I'm interested in your opinion. What should we Mongolians do to make famous maybe our culinary worldwide? How do you see the uh, development of food industry, uh, Mongolian food industry in the world? Mongolian food industry? Right. You mean the hospitality or general food? I think food exactly. Food. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So, bas this is this is a good question, but if you want to ask, answer me very short, mm -hmm. it's very difficult. Right. <laughs> Even though our Mongolian food is quite simple, you know, Mongolian food was never kind of delicatess or gastronomic. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Mongolian consumed food not for gastronomic hates. Mm -hmm. It was not a real. Uh, food in art combined like in France, Italy or in some Asian countries. Mm -hmm. Mongolian food is food as nutrition, mm -hmm. good nutrition, right. good ingredients, mm -hmm. healthy, simple, fast making, organic. but <laughs> organic, but not fast food, okay, fast mm -hmm. processing, fast mm -hmm. making. But we still have some tradition like curing or aging. Uh, tradition, you know, but still what, what we need to keep, we need to keep first authenticity. Mm -hmm. Okay, but regarding the cooking the Mongolian food, food in authentic way, mm -hmm. maybe it's very hard to promote this kind of food for 
outside of Mongolia. Mm -hmm. Authentic way of cooking only for us. Mm -hmm. We have very good ingredients, but we lack good, um, we, we lack uh, herbs, mm -hmm. spices, mm -hmm. and some techniques, mm -hmm. you know. But it's still, you can impress what we have now, like horhog, bodog, even marmot meat, mm -hmm. variety of the dairy products. We can still impress with li with li with a little uh, alternating with with, with with little alternation, impress the whole world. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it should it should be very healthy, organic ingredients. Mm -hmm. So this is our 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 our, our cards, you know. Mm -hmm. This is we need really to keep that. Now I'm really afraid that uh, many industry, uh, many companies in the, our food industry, mm -hmm. okay, starting to really be um, excited about the processing food. So the processed food is becoming uh, kind of trend in here in Mongolia. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should avoid that. We should we should better. If you really want to impress the world, right. we need to impress the outside world with our best organic ingredients, mm -hmm. with a history, mm -hmm. with the stories, mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and the character, what is behind, mm -hmm. you know? And what do you think about other channels, such as, for example, Art Gear Media Group, do you know it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So how do you think, what do you think, I mean, uh, by adding, by organizing, establishing such ch channels as Art Gear, mm -hmm. can we be more famous, I, I mean, in the world, or, um, or you think it, uh, so that so would forgive be not you my that. ignorance, okay, I, 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 I have heard about art care, but I really didn't watch it. I see. So, but I think you, you mean that the content when the guys cooking in Outback, yes. wild meat, yeah, etc. Right. Okay, I, I like that. This mm -hmm. really could inspire. Mm -hmm. this, this, this really could call, okay, this could really, this could really inspire people outside of Mongolia mm -hmm. to pay attention, you know, the wild, organic, barbarian food. <laughs> yes. uh, but um, in reality, I just I saw one video as a cook, as a chef, I saw so many mistakes, so it will not be mm -hmm. good food. Mm -hmm. It won't have good taste. Mm -hmm. it, maybe it's kind of a piece, art of peace, you know, of the, of the shooting, mm -hmm. but in reality, maybe it, it cannot work, you know. Mm -hmm. You can do so many things with a camera, mm -hmm. but in reality, it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I saw some some episodes of of those of those uh, of those channels. I think, but mm -hmm. whether it's art gear or not, I don't. I, I'm mm -hmm. not sure. But this way is okay. This way you can attract and promote. Yeah. But when those people will come to Mongolia, you need to be ready, impress them, live. You mm -hmm. know, really. Mm -hmm. But to that, by that time, we need to be ready for that. Mm -hmm. We need to have develop our philosophy. I was, you know, and some, I'm really discouraged. I'm really embarrassed when the Mongols really shy from their food. Mm. Okay, when you, 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 when, you take the, you, when you take your guests from outside, and you, instead of introducing your own food, food. They, they bring them to the Western, introducing the Western, semi-Western food, you know, some, some other foods mm -hmm. from abroad. Like goulash, this all this, uh, all this yeah. means. Th this is really ugly. This is really sad. You know, mm -hmm. you can demonstrate the way how you cook, but you add with some pickles, mm -hmm. some fermented stuff, some spices, mm -hmm. some do some creation, presentation, mm -hmm. etc. You you can work on it. But our food is really good. Right. Even I'm as a chef. I'm working as a, after twenty years in in this business. Mm -hmm. At home, I eat my my food, mm. Mongolian food. Of course. So this is this is something something special in this food. It's simplicity, good ingredient, but you can okay make you can remodel, you can alternate it with some additional spices yeah, some changes, and I, right? some some changes. Mm -hmm. But please keep the the the, the basis. <laughs> yeah. I, I, everyone should should look and say, oh, this is Mongolian. Mm -hmm. Now our name is being used by others, by Chinese, by Hong Kongese. Right. Outside of Mongolia, demonstrating as a Mongolian food, but it is not. Mm -hmm. I was in the Tibet in Himalaya. The food was horrible. Okay, the food was horrible. It was really tough, chewy meat 
with uh, some stuff, some mm. really buttery stuff. Yeah. But it was one of the most expensive restaurants in the world. Wow. They presented this as the best meat of a yak, which is gazing above an altitude of 3,500 meters. This butter is only, only you know, you, you can get milk from the yak, only half a liter of a yak milk. And from this yak milk, we make this butter. This is a story. This really impressed. Mm. This stay in the memory. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is not food for eating every day. Mm -hmm. But if you really want to present, you present in the right way. Mm -hmm. Don't shy. Be courageous. Okay. Be proud. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Very impressive ah, speech. Yeah. <laughs> mm, I really want to eat now and get some chunk of the fatty <laughs> meat now. <laughs> okay. Um, now, let's talk about your hobby. Hmm. So I know that also you do cheeses, right? Yes. You are a cheesemaker. I'm a cheesemaker. Yeah, oh. please tell us about that hobby. Oh, uh, it's a long story again. Again. So it's my life. Is, I'm not that young anyway. That's why when I start to talk, I have to really <laughs> compress all everything. my memories in a s <laughs> such a s small fraction of the time. I would say it's a hobby, yes. I had a lot of different hobbies in my past, but... This, they are nothing this is nothing to compare with the cheese. Okay. And I'm really regret why I haven't started this cheese making <laughs> long before. Wow. And last week I met Mongolian Actors and Cheesemakers Union's um, mm -hmm. ex uh, executive director, Michael Morrow. Mm -hmm. So, and he, he told <laughs> me that, actually he didn't, he didn't tell me anything about uh, praying a lot. <laughs> oh, you so. have to pray, especially in Mongolia. Let's take a look now to the next part with your hobby, shall we? Mm. Okay. <laughs> so, you are welcome to observe, to gaze my secret lab where I spent most of the time last two years. This is my lab, okay? Here we making some trial for different kinds of cheeses with a different milk, different season of the year. So what do we do here? What do we do? Why I'm doing cheeses? First, the Mongols are very familiar with the dairy products. They use them as a food, as nutrition, but we need to join the world trend to make this nutrition for different level. Okay? That's why we're making different kind of cheeses. I want to create here some world-class cheeses. Okay, this is our trial. What do we do here? Okay, I introduce you different kind of cheese. Here's most of them mold ripened cheeses with the blue mold, with white mold. Okay, here is also particularly uh, kind of mold of ripened cheese. Look how beautiful it is. So many mold, so different kind of mold in uh, uh, yeasts is uh, here. So all these molds contribute to the flavor. For example, this cheese is uh, almost six months old. Uh, it's done, it's, we call it, it's, they call it um, Tête de Moine. It's a French cheese, which means head of the monk. This is, I think it will be hammer in the future. Now this cheese is almost six months old. I wanna, I, we want to age it up to two years. This is kind of Comté, for, for French version, but in Swiss version, they call it Gruyère. Okay, so far inside looks like this. It will be amazing flavor. It will be hammer of the hammers. Okay, this cheese, uh, it's like stone, but it looks like stone, it feels like stone. I want to open it maybe next spring. It's already one and a half year old. You can talk, you can pray, you can observe, you can even influence, you can teach the cheese to become the cheese. Wow, didn't think that cheese can be that alive. <laughs> yes, that's true. Okay. That's why I, I like this job. I see. Uh, now let's talk about your free time. How do you spend your free time with your family? With mm -hmm. you are father of five children, right? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, free time is uh, 
which is really I don't have in my everyday. Sorry for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you have to ask my wife, you know, then she will tell you. Let's call her more. now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so free time. Mm. Actually, I'm a free person. Mm -hmm. I'm not really bound to some time frame to do. I have to do this today or tomorrow. And if you okay. see, I don't have this kind of diary or a schedule. Plan schedule right. Okay. For Time example, tables. Uh, you just invite me. I'm here. So I enjoy it. Yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah. And um, yes, I'm responsible. I, I respond for my company. I, but my team doing an ex excellent job. Mm -hmm. I really can guide some time, advice. Mm -hmm. But free time, yeah. I'm trying to, when in free time, I'm trying to spend with my uh, family by cooking, eating outside, mm -hmm. traveling. But uh, every kid, for example, I have, you say, I have uh, five kids. One is already over 30. He living wow. outside. He, he living his own way, life. He has a, his own universe. <laughs> in a, uh, one kid is in India. He's uh, wow. studying there almost more than 10 years. He's a monk. Uh, one boy, daughter is with me. I have two years old, young boy. Okay, I spend the most time with Aww. them. Mm -hmm. I have another guy who is in his critical age. He's in an 18. Uh. And so he doesn't like to spend much of time with me because <laughs> he's, he's trying to find his own world. I don't want to abstract him, make him free. On his own, right. So... Free time now with my family is with my daughter and with my uh, younger, younger, youngest, youngest son is a two years old, mm -hmm. which really require a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. And with my wife, my beloved wife, I'm sometimes I really regret I cannot spend much time with my family, not only with my family, also with my parents. My parents is not young anymore, but uh, still, <laughs> still straight uh, st and strong and. Um, uh -huh. I still <laughs> afraid, of <them. laughs> afraid of them. I respect them. Okay, daddy. Okay. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but uh, they, they still need some time. But I'm preparing myself now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So soon I have to really take care of them and uh, also of my family. Mm -hmm. Soon, mm. I have to spend more time with them. But people's attitude to to free time itself mm -hmm. quite different. That's mm -hmm. why people usually say. Oh, I'm busy. Oh, I can't. Mm -hmm. I don't have enough time for my mm -hmm. family, and that's why. That's why maybe mm -hmm. they feel mm -hmm. they have that lack of time because mm -hmm. their attitude is quite yes. more complex yeah. Yeah, than. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. for me, it's a little bit different. I think uh, every day for me is I'm, I'm a free man. Wow, that's good. I enjoy that. Wow, your family is very happy. Must be very happy <laughs> with you. Yes, and uh, the last question, uh, which will end our today's episode, will be about your dreams and future uh, in the future like uh, do you have a dream maybe what future goals do you have mm, dreams future goals dreaming I think it's uh, in my age we don't dream much I'm sorry mm -hmm. um, but I don't I wouldn't advise to young people stop dreaming mm -hmm. they have to dream for the future I hope that the future will be better than today if it doesn't, it will not be better. Okay, I will. Uh, I'm ready to accept it. Mm. So, I think this is my, the way of my. Attitude toward mm. what I have today and toward what I will have, mm. might have tomorrow. Wow. Deep, simple, and easy. <laughs> uh, did I say some complicated? <laughs> okay, no, I no, try no, no, to no. really wrap it up, yeah. because you suddenly strike this question, you know. <laughs> what is a dream? Okay, well, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time, and uh, we wish you more to have more free time yeah. to spend with your family, of course. Okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and uh, all this the is, best, of course. It's my dream. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Dear viewers, today we had the director of Silk Road Magic, Mr. Inge Yatamsurang. We will see you next Wednesday. Have a nice evening. Goodbye. <laughs>